Hi, welcome to Movino Recap. Smashing the subscribe button is very valuable to us, so go ahead and leave us a like, sit back, and enjoy. The movie begins on a snowy Christmas morning in the kingdom in Essel. A worker of the body house abruptly awakens her customer, Gawain, by dousing him with a bucket of cold water. Upon realizing that he has overslept, Gawain hastily departs from the building, anxious to prepare himself for the grand Christmas feast that his uncle, the king, has planned for later. Upon arriving at the castle, Gawain informs his mother that he spent the entire night at the church, but she remains skeptical of his explanation. Gawain observes that his mother is not dressed for the festive celebration, to which she confides that she lacks the courage to participate this year, but urges him to go and enjoy himself. After Gawain departs, his mother summons her maids and proceeds to blindfold herself as part of a special ritual, during which she composes a letter bearing a green seal. During the festive gathering, the king extends a personal invitation to Gawain to sit beside him, given their familial connection. Eager to hear some tales from Gawain, the king is disappointed to discover that he has none to share. However, the queen interjects and suggests that Gawain will have his own stories to recount once he achieves the esteemed status of the legendary knights at the table. This remark holds great significance to Gawain, who has long desired to become a knight. As Gawain's mother burns the letter and the ashes yield a sprout, the king commences with his speech, only to be abruptly interrupted by the unexpected arrival of a figure resembling a tree known as the Green Knight. The Green Knight presents a letter bearing a green seal, and upon breaking the seal, the queen becomes overtaken by the Green Knight and recites the letter in his voice. The Green Knight proposes a Christmas game, in which one of the king's warriors attempts to strike him with a blow. Should the warrior succeed, he will receive the Green Knight's axe, but must also journey to the Green Chapel one year hence to receive a similar blow in return. As the queen completes the reading of the letter, it spontaneously combusts, causing her to collapse in a state of vertigo. Given the king's advanced age, he is unable to take up the challenge and instead invites any of his knights to do so. Gawain steps forward, eager to demonstrate his prowess. However, lacking a sword, the king offers him his own, emphasizing that it is merely a game. Gawain readies himself for the contest, but is taken aback when the Green Knight unexpectedly places his axe on the ground, causing moss to sprout from the stones. The Green Knight kneels and presents his neck, prompting Gawain to lower his sword and decapitate the knight. Gawain assumes that the game is now over, but to his surprise, the Green Knight promptly rises and retrieves his head, reminding Gawain of their agreement to meet in a year's time. The Green Knight then departs, leaving behind an awkward silence that is quickly dispelled by everyone's jubilant celebration of Gawain's triumph. Gawain returns the sword to the king and sets aside the axe, while his mother, exhausted but content, falls to her knees. Nearly a year later, children are entertained with a puppet show that recounts the story of Gawain's victory, but the ending of the second meeting is shown to be rather tragic for the hero. Essel taunts Gawain for his newfound legendary status in the town, which he despises, although he consents to sitting for a very vivid portrait. That evening, while Gawain is at the local tavern, the inebriated patrons discuss the tale of the Green Knight, but also spread rumors about Gawain's mother being a witch. As a consequence of the man's impudence, Gawain proceeds to assault him. When Gawain arrives back home, he is startled to find the king present with his mother. The king reminds Gawain that Christmas is rapidly approaching, and when Gawain reminds him of the Green Knight's game, the king reiterates that it was merely a game, but still remains unfinished. Gawain harbors doubts that the Green Knight will be waiting for him, but the king tenderly strokes Gawain's face and encourages him to go nonetheless. When the first snow of the season descends, preparations for Gawain's journey commence. The queen and king bring a shield to the church to be sanctified, while the axe is removed from its case. Gawain's mother crafts a unique green girdle with a secret emblem concealed within. Essel is reluctant to let Gawain depart, but he insists that he has given his word. Just before leaving, Gawain's mother presents him with the green girdle and urges him to wear it continuously, claiming it will shield him from harm. Gawain sets out on his journey unaccompanied and camps for the night, taking solace in the bell that Essel had bestowed upon him as he reflects on their final conversation. As he journeyed alone, Gawain remembered his last conversation with Essel, in which she revealed her feelings for him and asked him to make her a lady. However, Gawain didn't give her an answer, and this had disappointed her. The following day, he reached a crossroads and chose a path on instinct, which led him through the forest. While traversing the woods, Gawain saw a fox running nearby and stumbled upon a body leaning against a tree. After a while, Gawain arrives at an empty battlefield and stumbles upon a young scavenger who is searching for his lost brothers. When Gawain mentions his destination, the Green Chapel, the boy offers directions and asks for payment. Gawain tosses a coin to the boy and then proceeds to a nearby stream to let his horse rest and drink. Finally, he takes the path through the forest that the boy directed him towards. As Gawain makes his way through the forest, he is suddenly ambushed by two thieves who corner and restrain him. The scavenger boy, who had previously given Gawain directions, reveals that the plan all along was to rob him. The boy taunts Gawain with a knife and takes the green girdle from him, while the other two thieves tie him up and search through his belongings. 
After the thieves depart with his belongings, the scavenger smashes Gawain's shield and takes his axe with him on the horse, while his companions follow. Soon after they leave, Gawain experiences a vision of his own death, in which he sees a skeleton occupying his place. Gawain, unwilling to meet such a pathetic end, crawls on the ground like a worm until he is able to reach a sword. He uses it to free himself from the ropes, but inadvertently inflicts a wound upon himself in the process. Gawain retrieves his belongings and flees through the forest, becoming lost. As night descends, he stumbles upon a lake and is surprised to see an empty dwelling by the water. After entering the building and finding it empty, Gawain decides to make himself comfortable and sleeps on the bed. But soon he's woken up by Winifred, who demands to know why he's taken her bed. Gawain apologizes and explains that he's a traveler who lost his way. Winifred then mentions that she's lost something too, which surprises Gawain. However, Winifred's strange movements, floating instead of walking, make Gawain uneasy and he starts to wonder if she might be some kind of spirit. As they step outside, Winifred recounts to Gawain how a lord had come to her house and attempted to assault her, but when she fought back, he murdered her and threw her head into the lake. She then asks Gawain to retrieve her head, but when he asks about his potential reward, Winifred is puzzled by the question. Gawain resolves to do the honorable thing and dives into the lake. As he searches for the skull, he hears voices calling out to him, and the water turns red. He eventually finds the skull and quickly swims back to the surface with it. When he returns to the bedroom, Winifred is gone, but the fox returns briefly to confirm that Gawain is okay. Gawain finds Winifred's skeleton lying on the bed, and as he places the skull on the skeleton's neck, it magically transforms into Winifred's actual head. Gawain was taken aback and dropped the object in astonishment when he heard Winifred's revelation that the Green Knight was actually someone he knew. However, he quickly picked it up again only to find that it had transformed back into a skull. Gawain proceeded to place the skull back with its body on the bed, and at that precise moment, the rising sun illuminated the room, revealing the Green Knight's axe waiting for him. Gawain treks on foot, carrying the weight of the axe with him, and notices the persistent fox tailing him. When Gawain takes a break at a cave to rest, the fox attempts to follow him inside. Although initially trying to shoo the fox away, Gawain relents and allows the creature to take refuge in the cave with him. The following day, Gawain and the fox embark on their journey together, traveling alongside each other. After walking for a few hours, Gawain and the fox ascend a hill, but Gawain stumbles and tumbles to the bottom, nearly losing Essel's bell in the process. Later, ravenous with hunger, Gawain hastily consumes the first mushrooms he comes across, only to vomit and experience hallucinations of moss growing on his hand. Suddenly, a low rumble of thunder catches his attention, and when he glances up, he catches sight of a eerie figure gazing at him from a distance. On the following day, Gawain and the fox continue their journey until the earth begins to tremble, leading them to a horde of giants appearing from behind the hills. Gawain hastens toward them, requesting to hitch a ride on their shoulders, but as one of the giants attempts to lift him up, the fox growls menacingly, deterring them from getting too close. The giants react with a high-pitched cry before departing, causing Gawain and the fox to opt for a different route. Hours later, Gawain is overcome with exhaustion, collapsing to the ground and questioning his ability to carry on. Fortunately, the fox discovers a castle in the vicinity, motivating Gawain to get back up and dash to the doors to plead for assistance before losing consciousness. The following morning, Gawain awakens to find himself lying on a lavish bed, feeling a gentle hand stroking his forehead. Initially assuming it to be his mother, he blinks and realizes it is actually the lord of the castle. The lord, an admirer of Gawain's exploits, reassures him not to fret as it is still December 21st and he has sufficient time to recuperate. Subsequently, the lord escorts Gawain to the dining hall for breakfast and introduces him to his mother, who wears a blindfold, and a lady that startles Gawain with her resemblance to Essel. Gawain courteously kisses the lady's hand and respectfully declines her invitation to remain for several days, as he must reach the chapel soon. However, the Lord intervenes, revealing that the Green Chapel is merely a few hours' journey from the castle, and urges Gawain to rest and rejuvenate for a few days before continuing on Christmas morning. Gawain consents to stay and explores the castle, uncovering depictions of the fox in the paintings. He stumbles upon a colossal library and learns that the Lady of the Castle has perused every book within its walls, even authoring some of them herself. As a gesture of gratitude, she presents Gawain with a gift and requests a kiss, but Gawain only bestows a kiss upon her cheek. Afterward, the lady implores Gawain to pose for a portrait, and utilizing a clever lighting technique, she produces a very disconcerting depiction of Gawain hanging upside down while he sits in the adjoining room. When she presents him with the finished artwork, the lady observes the bell that Gawain wears around his neck and inquires if it was a present from a beloved individual. However, upon receiving a negative response, she snaps the string and pilfers the bell. Later on, the lord returns from a hunting trip and gifts Gawain with the deer he had slain. The two men retire to the castle to indulge in a beverage, and the lord startles Gawain by pledging to furnish him with his finest hunting spoils every day. Nevertheless, in exchange, Gawain must surrender any items he obtains from the castle. 
Gawain is bewildered, questioning how there could be anything that the Lord did not already possess, but the Lord simply replies that the castle operates in enigmatic ways. The lady cuts in the topic of the Green Knight, elaborating on how the greens of nature invariably manage to resprout, while she fiddles with her deck of cards. The Lord inquires about Gawain's objectives in the pact, to which Gawain elucidates that he seeks enough glory to be deemed a knight. Later that evening, as Gawain retires to prepare for bed, the mother appears, caresses his face and then her own chest before departing without any justification. Upon waking up the next morning, Gawain realizes that the lady had been observing him while he was asleep. She approaches him and inquires as to why he did not visit her chambers the previous night. Gawain responds by stating that it would not have been appropriate. The lady then inquires about his belief in magic and proceeds to reveal that she possesses the green girdle. The lady climbs onto the bed and starts to get intimate with Gawain, urging him to take the girdle from her as she assists him. During the encounter, the lady tells Gawain that the girdle is enchanted and will keep him safe. After Gawain takes the girdle, the lady allows him to keep it, but she also leaves traces of his own seed on his hand. Gawain is surprised to see the mother standing there as he leaves, and feeling fed up with the games, he decides to depart. While in the forest, he meets the lord, who can tell that Gawain has received something from the castle. To redeem himself, the lord kisses Gawain as a way to take back what he did with the lady. Gawain declares his departure, causing the lord to present him with a gift, the latest hunt, which turns out to be the still-living fox. Hours later, Gawain and the fox reach a stream engulfed by an orange fog, with a boat floating on the water. However, when Gawain moves closer to the boat, the fox growls at him, stopping him in his tracks. Gawain is perplexed by the fox's behavior until the fox surprisingly reveals its ability to speak and cautions Gawain that there will be no happy ending to his journey. The fox suggests that Gawain should go back home, but instead of heeding the advice, Gawain uses his sword to scare the animal away for not being supportive. Gawain continues on, taking the boat down the stream until he finds a road marked by a cross and returns to land. Within a short walk, he arrives at the chapel where he discovers the green knight dozing at the altar. Gawain takes a seat in front of him and places the axe on the ground before patiently waiting. Come Christmas morning, the green knight awakens, seizes the axe, and declares that they will complete the game. Gawain must kneel and receive the same strike he delivered a year prior. When the knight lifts his axe, Gawain is so frightened that he involuntarily jerks back. The knight playfully chides him for his reaction, given that Gawain had an entire year to brace himself for this encounter. Gawain takes a moment to compose himself, and then requests that the knight try again. Despite the knight lifting his axe once more, Gawain is still unable to suppress his instinctive reaction and flinches again. Gawain questions whether the game is as simple as it seems, and upon receiving confirmation from the green knight, he kneels once again. However, when the axe descends towards him, he recoils and dodges the blow, unwilling to meet his end so quickly. Gawain flees, and as he traverses the forest, he is astonished to come across his horse. Eventually, he arrives back in the city and reunites with his mother, who tends to his injuries. Afterwards, Gawain visits Essel, who is disheartened upon realizing her precious bell is missing. Gawain engages in intimacy with the other person, yet he refuses to remove his girdle. Several days later, Gawain is summoned to the castle due to the ailing king's limited remaining time. Despite the king's feeble state, he manages to knight Gawain and bestows upon him his treasured sword. Following the king's passing, Gawain ascends to the throne, which appears to have been his mother's scheme all along. After nine months have elapsed, Essel delivers Gawain's child. Nevertheless, Gawain still declines to wed her and merely appears to collect the infant before departing and leaving some funds for the brothel, without any concern for the heartbroken Essel he leaves behind. A year following this event, Gawain marries a woman of nobility and on their wedding night, he prohibits her from removing his girdle. Despite engaging in their conjugal duties, Gawain finds them to be less gratifying than his encounters with Essel. With time, the kingdom becomes embroiled in a conflict, prompting Gawain to initiate the training of his child as a knight. However, as soon as the youngster attains adulthood, he perishes in combat. The fallout from the war alters the populace's view of Gawain, causing him to become a despised ruler subjected to a barrage of thrown stones. In the wake of her son's demise, Essel now harbors an even greater animosity towards Gawain. Nevertheless, the queen eventually delivers a new heir to the throne. Several years later, the castle becomes besieged, and Gawain is abandoned by everyone, including his wife and mother, who leave him alone with the unsettling portrait that remains perfectly straight. It is at this point that Gawain finally removes his girdle, which he had never previously removed. As a result of his actions, Gawain's head tumbles. Abruptly, Gawain blinks and realizes he has returned to the chapel. It transpires that everything he had witnessed was a vision that depicted the future he would encounter if he absconded. Ultimately, the Green Knight prepares to swing his axe, but Gawain requests a brief respite to remove the girdle, which should leave him defenseless. Having removed the girdle, Gawain can now affirm his preparedness to face the Green Knight. The knight tenderly strokes his face, commending him for his newfound courage and his fidelity to his word. Subsequently, the Green Knight tells him, Now off with your head. 
Please subscribe and turn on notifications to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.